In this video, we introduce you to a French sneaker company called Veja as an example of an eco-branding strategy. Their story stretches from the fashion world of Paris to manufacturing in Porto Alegre in southern Brazil and to the Serengueros tapping rubber trees in the Amazon rainforest. It was founded in 2004 by two young Frenchmen named Cop and Marillion. Since then, they've sold 1.4 million pairs of shoes and developed a strong ethical fashion brand. Veja falls directly into the eco-branding quadrant because their environmental strategy is to use highly sustainable processes and features of their product to differentiate themselves from other sneaker companies. And while their internal activities are very important, their primary strategy is outward-looking, focusing on providing a product that is rewarded by consumers by paying more for its environmental qualities. In a nutshell, Veja's value proposition is to provide carefully designed, highly ethical sneakers to the socially and environmentally aware. They are differentiated by their actions to improve the welfare of the workers in their supply chain and reducing the environmental harm of their supply chain processes. Here is a map of Veja's business model that shows how the pieces of its business model relate to each other. We'll use this to see how the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Veja is Brazilian for look, so let's start by looking at Veja's supply chain. 30 to 40 percent of the soles of the sneakers are made of natural rubber. The Amazon is the only place in the world where rubber trees grow in the wild. Veja sources their rubber from plantations harvested by skilled rubber tappers called serengueros. The rubber trees need to be harvested very carefully. If too much sap is drained or if they are cut too deeply, it can kill the trees. Each serengueros harvests about 25 liters each day. Veja claims that one kilogram of natural rubber harvested protects 1.2 hectares of forest each year. They estimate they are protecting about 120,000 hectares of forest. They pay more for natural rubber than synthetic rubber. The higher price encourages the Serengueros who are then incentivized to treat the forest well. A healthy forest produces more natural rubber, and more natural rubber means there is more to sell at good prices. This turns their choice of material used in their shoes into positive environmental action. They do the same for the organic cotton farmers that provide the cotton that is woven into canvas. They deal directly with 320 small-scale farming families through a producer association instead of working with a market intermediary. They pay 65% more than the market price for their cotton and agree upon the price in advance of the harvest. They pay a fair trade premium at the end of the harvest to improve the general standard of living for the families. They have a very close relationship with the farmers that treats the people in their supply chain well and secures a source of authentic organic cotton. Now they could have chosen to work only with big cotton producers which are more reliable. Instead, they chose to work with farmers who only own about a hectare of land in a fragile region that tends towards drought. This choice comes with challenges. In 2015, there was a drought and they had to use recycled cotton to supplement organic cotton because there wasn't enough harvest. In 2006, there was a caterpillar invasion in Piranha and the farmers abandoned organic principles and sprayed pesticide to save the harvest. Interestingly, rather than abandoning the farmers and their crops, Veja still bought the harvest and found alternative uses for it. Veja works with NGOs like Esplar that support the local farmers to develop techniques for agroecology as well as working for gender and racial equality and environmental justice. For instance, they introduced neem trees that provide a natural insect repellent for cotton plants. They support mixed farming so that the farmers grow their food mixed with the crops. These practices are better for the land and better for the farmers. You can see that there is a strong social contract between Veja and its producers. Producers are not anonymous arm's-length contractors, but real partners in Veja's supply chain. You might argue that it is too risky to be so close to producers and it would be much better to buy organic cotton on the open market. This would reduce supply risk and over-dependence on producers. After all, why risk their problems becoming your problems? There are a few reasons why it works for Veja. One is that there is less supply of organic cotton than demand at this time so working with farmers secures a supply of verifiable organic cotton. You might also think that such a dependence on farmers is dangerous, which is true. 
Having only a few suppliers for a key resource can be risky if something goes wrong. On the other side of the balance is the benefit the close relationship adds to the authenticity of Vesha's story, which adds to the value that it provides to their customers. They are rewarded for their producer relationships by the reputational benefits and the higher price consumers are willing to pay. It does leave them open to the risk of something going wrong and public outcry at their mistakes, which means that they have to be very careful. Veja has baked its social and environmental mission into their strategy. Their factory is a few hours outside of Porto Alegre. 80% of workers are unionized. They pay on average 40% more than minimum wage, provide four weeks paid leave, overtime, and 40 hours per week. They conduct a social audit each year to ensure compliance and to be transparent. Their logistics and e-commerce are handled by the organization Association Sans Frontieres, which reintegrates socially marginalized workers into the workforce and gives them social stability. Once again, it sounds very risky to put such workers into a critical operational role, but here it's worked for 14 years. These trusted partnerships ensure a close relationship that reduces some of the risk, and the relationships contribute to the authenticity of Vesha's story and the consumer's willingness to pay. Another interesting thing about Vesha's business model is how it sustains itself. Design, quality, and authenticity increase the willingness to pay of their target customers. Its authenticity increases customers' willingness to pay because it is transparent about what is going on, and it is convincing enough that consumers trust that Veja is really doing what they say they're doing. This willingness to pay increases the revenues, which means better margins and profits. Essential to the eco-branding strategy is that the consumers are willing to pay. If they weren't, that would make many of Vesha's activities impossible. You may have noticed that Vesha's costs are much higher than most of their competitors, like Adidas, Nike, Puma, and others. How can this possibly work? One thing they do is to balance this by not advertising. Remembering that advertising for a big sports clothing company like Nike is about 10% of revenue. This, too, could seem like a terrible idea. How can a firm survive without advertising? It works for Vesha because their social and environmental story is so unusual that it draws attention, which is its own advertising. They get to place their shoes in exclusive stores beside much more expensive shoes. Having celebrities like Charlotte Gainsbourg, Emma Watson, David Beckham, and Meghan Markle use their products is worth far more than any conventional advertising budget. So with a way of keeping costs under control and a strong revenue stream, Vesha has become a profitable sneaker company. Profitability is really important because part of their mission is to inspire other firms to raise their social and environmental performance. If Vesha were just another shoe company struggling to stay afloat, it wouldn't inspire anyone. But because it is successful, its success inspires others to try to do the same or better. This might sound dangerous because they are not only inviting but training future competition. The challenge for Veja is to reinvest in all their activities to retain an innovation edge on any competition. Other companies can copy where Veja has been, but not where they are going. The space of eco-fashion is in its early years, so there is a lot of room for growth. You can see that an eco-branding strategy works for Veja because their activities are clear and truthful, so they have their consumers trust. Even if another firm loves the idea and wants to copy their strategy, it's very hard to copy because this is all about strong connections between people. In this video, you've seen a case study of a firm that is using an eco-branding strategy to differentiate its products from others and for which consumers are willing to pay for its environmental qualities. You've seen how Veja has invested heavily in building relationships throughout its supply chain and is transparent so that the public can verify its authenticity. The authenticity is rewarded with the price premium, which is then used to reinvest back into the firm and its supply chain, which again reinforces its authenticity and consumer willingness to pay. A virtuous cycle that benefits Veja and the environment. Thank you for watching.